question of the research project was um, mainly dealing with uh, kin kinesthetic experience and offering that to the audience. And for me, that came from that's when I when I see any movement piece, any performance piece, whether it's dance or not, I connect most to it when I feel like I am moving with the performer. And that's sort of a phenomenon that I wanted to understand better and break open and see if I could purposefully create a piece with that intention throughout. Um, and then my hypothesis was that I could do this through multiple perspectives. Um, because I am often a frustrated audience member if I'm stuck in my seat. So the combination of being able to see all of the things that I want to see as a viewer of a body in motion, so all of the different perspectives, but also myself as an audience member being able to move around the piece and choose where I watch it from, I, my, that was my hypothesis. If I put those two things together and work with camera and with body back and forth, can I create a piece that offers that to an audience member? Exactly, and, I, and even in a hyper-modern or contemporary theater black, black box space where there are so many possibilities and so many options, we often opt for a fixed audience. And maybe it's not always a sort of the sloped proscenium or whatever would have you, we're often fixed. And I've always really envied um, performance art that takes place either in public or that takes place in a gallery setting where there is the space to feel like you're not doing something wrong as an audience member by moving around, by expressing your freedom or and sneezing. sneezing, but <laughs> and being and being curious yeah. and and really following that curiosity and feeling free and welcome to do so. Um, yeah, that's where it comes from for me. What the videos do is really kind of create this like really amplified I think perceptual and sensory experience like they kind of sometimes they make you dizzy if you yeah. are watching like the when all the videos are going and I was just thinking of something that I read once that was about like watching different kinds of performance and I think that as dancers or people who are like tend to be really like really tuned in kinesthetically that we do really move watching dance but I read something once that said that people watching live performance, like, that people have, like, a, the easiest kind of instant response to theater because it's, like, the kind of movement that it's pedestrian movement. So people more instantaneously connect to that. I don't know. I did read this somewhere. But this is, yeah, like a, Like regular, like, non-dancer yeah. humans. Um, so <laughs> I was just thinking, like, well, I think maybe part of what you're doing is like you're kind of blowing up the perspective and the experience of the dancer kind of in a way that people can't help but like have this really visceral mm -hmm. reaction. But what I wanted to do was have the use of the technology completely affect and infect how I created movement. Mm -hmm. That to me was more interesting. Um, and again, because I did this in an academic institution, that, that was how I created my masters. That's what I said I was going to do, so I was going to do it. And it meant a lot of going back and forth between the footage that I was um, creating through improvisation, mainly movement-wise, and then seeing what kinds of movements were too dizzifying, too nauseating to watch once I'd projected them somewhere, which ones sort of had more potential to be not only interesting, but also giving you a kinesthetic feeling, wanting to move as you're watching the image that's filmed by a camera either externally or on the body. So it was, they all dictated each other and that's how all of the movement that you see in the piece was developed. There's only moments, I, I craft those moments, basically. So when I want a sense of being overwhelmed, that's what you'll see, and you can choose to look or not look, and that. Tell but that's what interests me as well: is when do you decide that you can't look anymore? Where do you look at when and why? Looking away. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, and I think that that's interesting to me. But it, 
if I were an audience member seeing something like this, I would wonder about that too. Why did I look away then? Mm -hmm. Why did I feel like I needed to? Why did I feel nauseated? Why did I feel like I wanted to see even closer? Why did I feel like I needed to move? Those, some of those are psychological and some are physiological mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. questions and answers. And they all interest me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a whole other set of questions, but I think we'll stop here. Okay. <laughs> Great. Great.